be talking about drawing. Drawing is probably the most basic form of art, and humans have been doing it for a long time. The first known drawing was from over 70,000 years ago, found in a cave in South Africa. A crisscross design that looks like a hashtag, made with a type of clay crayon on a rock. Here's another very old drawing, found in a cave in Lascaux, France. These very old drawings are often called cave paintings. That's because drawing and painting can be very similar. And also, the world is complicated. An artwork can be more than one type of art at the same time. Like this fantastic one by third grade artist Diasia Negron. It's a collage, but it's also a painting, and it's almost even like a sculpture. Art is like people in that way. We can be more than one thing at the same time, too. Take me. I'm a brother, and an artist, and an uncle, and a teacher, and someone trying to juggle a soccer ball. Oh, thank goodness. Here's my nephew, Dominic, to show me how it's done. Practice, Uncle Maddie. That's right, practice. Thanks, Dommy. We can become better at drawing by practicing. One way to start drawing is to use shapes. I like to draw cats and dogs with shapes. Sometimes I try to make them look like people, just like the way that Lewis Wayne did. Lewis Wayne, an artist from England, is famous for his anthropomorphized drawings and paintings of cats. Anthropomorphized is a fancy word that just means that his cats were made to seem human in some way. I love his work. They always make me smile. But it's a sad story how this artist came to draw cats. While his wife was ill, she was comforted by a stray cat named Peter. After she died, he never stopped drawing and painting cats even in the last 15 years of his life, which he had to spend in a hospital. I'm not sure which of his cats I like the best. The funny ones, or the ones that are more like beautiful, abstract designs. Now, back to drawing with shapes. Right now, think of all the different shapes in this found object sculpture that Binghamton artist Ian Gosine put together. He then drew it like a still life. We'll hear more about still lives from an artist friend in a little Great bit. Great drawing. Well done, Ian. Let's see that again. I decided on a circle for the head. Don't worry about making any shape perfect. It'll probably look better if it's not. Long skinny ovals for the legs or long skinny rectangles. Triangles for the ears. And one for the nose pointing down. And one curved line this way and one that way for the mouth. You can use the same mouth for a cat or a dog, but I'd change the nose. Little oval paws, little triangle claws. Make any type of tail you want. Can you put shapes together to draw any animal? Can you put shapes together to draw almost anything? The answer is yes. Think about what you can draw with shapes. Drawing is using any dry material, like a pencil or a crayon, though sometimes wet materials like ink are drawing too, on a surface, like a piece of paper, or a rock, or a patch of dirt, or a piece of cardboard. There are lots of things that you can draw on. Can you think of all the things that you can draw with? Marcus or pastels, chalk, charcoal, color pencil, pen and ink. Drawing with your finger in the air. Drawing with a flashlight at night. All right, all right. The rest of the song is at the end of the episode. Okay, now. Let's make a drawing surface that you scratch into to make your drawing. Scratch paper is really fun to make and to scratch. Here are the supplies that you'll need. 
If you don't have any thick paper, look for an old greeting card that you can give a rebirth to as a beautiful scratch paper drawing surface. You must completely cover the paper. Make sure that you're pushing down really hard on your crayon or oil pastel. You don't want to see any of the paper underneath, but you may want to leave a border so that you don't have to paint right up to the edge of the paper. We can always cut these out when we're finished. After you mix some of your paint with dish soap, then you paint over the crayon or oil pastel area of the paper with the paint and soap mixture. Be careful not to put on too much. Make sure that you are using even, steady strokes. You can try any combination of colors. You can use tempera or acrylic paint, but just remember not to mix the two different types of paint together. While we are waiting for that to dry, let's say hi to Binghamton artist Jessica Petrolak. My artwork is all about memory and is usually centered around the toys and video games I played when I was your age. Connecting my memories together like a puzzle helps me understand the person I am today. I layer Crayola marker, gel pen, oil pastel, and sometimes I experiment with watercolor and even really gross, really old, and really chunky glitter nail polish. Here are some of my favorite toys. Setting up toys together can be a really cool still life. Wait, what's a still life? Well, it's kind of like arranging objects and materials a certain way and then drawing them. This is a practice artists use for many, many years to improve their skills. Thank you, Jessica. The way you mix those different drawing materials together creates such beautiful textures and vibrant colors in your work. Fourth grade Binghamton artist Jameer McLaughlin's drawing reminds me a little bit like Jess Petrolak's art. See? He mixed crayon and marker together on that donut to create that cool texture. Excellent job, Jameer! In drawing episode 2, we'll explore some different ways to color these shape drawings, and we'll look at one of the artists whose drawings I admire the most, Beverly Buchanan, and also her sculptures of houses. Third grade Dryden artist Rosemary McLean looked closely at this cute stuffed turtle and then drew it, trying to include as many details as possible. The drawing turned out really, really well. Hold on one second. I'm trying to play this piano part. Maybe my musician friend, William Roberts, can help me out. Practice makes perfect. Thanks, Will. That helps me remember that drawing is like music or like juggling a soccer ball. You need to practice if you want to get better. Practicing observation drawing, where you look closely at something and try to draw it, just like Rosie did with her stuffed turtle, can help you become better at drawing. Taking the time to try to draw things from life also has helped me be able to notice more details and patterns in nature and in all of my surroundings. If you don't take the time to really observe and get to know something, you could walk by it every day without ever really seeing it or knowing it. When you are doing an observation jar, remember to draw lightly so that it's easy to erase when you need to adjust your drawing. You can see me drawing the shapes that I see and combining them or changing them to match what I see. I am also using proportion to help me draw, which we will talk more about in part two when we learn to draw the face. Wow, look at fourth grade Binghamton artist Anthony Buemi's drawing of his shoe. Notice how he drew the letters wrapping around the shoe. Nicely done, Anthony. And then we have Ian Gosai choosing another great object to draw and creating a Cubist masterpiece. Next, we have another fourth grade Binghamton artist, Zaron Porter, who did a drawing of a picture instead. Drawing from other pictures can help your drawing skills as well. In some ways, it's even harder. Amazing job on that hand. Third grade artist, Mary Kellum, did an observation drawing of this shelf with all of the things on it. 
I was really impressed by this drawing because it was such a difficult thing to do an observation drawing of. So many details. Amazing, Mary. Fifth grade artist Maidalyn Carty impressed me just as much. The way she created a shadow and used shading was excellent. We'll learn more about shading in the next drawing episode. Take a look at these found object sculptures. The artists Anthony Boemi, Cooper Faringa, and Alanis Thomas sent in to Art TV. Great job, artists. Now that the scratch paper is dry, let's scratch into it. The paper with the oil pastel on it is the brightest. All the surfaces worked well, except for the cardboard. Didn't work so great, but it still worked. I can't wait to see what you'll draw on your scratch paper. If you do this project, please email me a picture of your scratch art. The last technique I'll leave you with is an eraser drawing. All you do is cover your paper in pencil. Then use your eraser to draw your drawing. Okay, now here's the rest of the drawing song. See you next time. Transmarkers or pastels, charcoal color pencil, pen and ink. Drawing with your finger in the air. Drawing with a flashlight at night. Crayons, markers, or pastels, chalk, chalk, or color pencil, pen and ink. Take that chalk and draw on the sidewalk. Take a rock and scratch it along another rock. Crayons, markers, or pastels, chalk, chalk, or color pencil, pen. Am I forgetting anything? You can draw with lots of things. Grands, marks, oil pastels, chalk, chalk, or pencil, pen and ink.